All right. <laughs> Sorry, I forget there's a whole lot of little things that happen. Um, good morning. Hello. Welcome. I hope that you guys can hear me. I'm not 100% sure, <laughs> honestly, because I'm just kind of looking at a dashboard. Um, but uh, my name is Joey Sinard. Welcome to IDTX. Special thanks to uh, IDT, Tom McDowell. Uh, with me, we've got uh, Andre. He's going to be doing a session on uh, basically the basics of Photoshop, because whether you like it or not, you're a graphic designer now, uh, if you're in instructional <laughs> design. Um, yes, so, exactly. I, yeah, so uh, I'm thrilled that he's doing, uh, I'm thrilled he's doing this course, actually. It's, it's, I'm really excited for it. And I've worked with him, uh, I've worked with him before, so I know the, uh, the skills are solid. So I'm going to be, uh, let's see. Yep. I'm going to be, um, kind of monitoring chat and whatnot. So feel free to ask, ask any sort of questions. He's going to be answering those throughout. Um, but I'm going to keep this, uh, keep this little intro pretty quick. Uh, take away Andre. Okay. Thank you. I hope you can all hear me as well. And, you know, since this session is about Photoshop, not about me, I will jump straight into the Photoshop and I will share my screen with the content that I've prepared for today. Give me a second. So I hope you'll be able to see my screen right now. I don't know if it's working or not. So if you could write um, something on the chat. Okay, I can see some thumbs up, so it's perfect. Yeah, so today I would love to take you on some creative journey and on the adventure to discover the basic features of the Photoshop. And I thought it would be nice to actually work on some examples, not just say, okay, this is this option, this is this, and you can do all the amazing stuff by clicking on this one button. So right now on the screen, you can see a simple layout that I prepared for today's session. And the idea is to create it from, to create it from scratch together with you, so you can see my design process. I, and in the meantime, I can share some tips and tricks uh, that I use when working on the new project. Uh, actually, I'm not sure uh, about you know how much familiar are you with the software. So before jumping into the design, I will just briefly explain and introduce the uh, workspace in the Photoshop. So. On the left side, you can see a toolbar with uh, tools, of course. At the top, there are some menus with options. On the right, you have a panels dedicated to specific areas like layers or color swatches. Uh, when you're designing, it's probable that by accident, you can you know, take the window out or you can close some panel. Uh, and now, you know, the workspace is a bit messy. You don't know how to restore the closed window. And a quick way to do it is to click a window at the top, hit the workspace, and then reset essentials. And now we have everything back perfectly in shape. Uh, coming back to workspace again, you can see that I'm working on the essentials uh, workspace, which is a default mode in the Photoshop. But there are also others like 3D, motion, graphing, and web. Of course, uh, when you are working with your design, with the time, you will see which panels or which options are most useful for you. And then you can adjust uh, the workspace for your needs. So this is the template or the layout that I will recreate today. So let's start with uh, creating a new document. You can do this by clicking a file and new. And what's really nice that in the Photoshop, uh, close to the specific option, you can see already the shortcut. I'm working on Windows 10, but I know that the shortcuts are a bit different on the Macs. But in this case, to create a new uh, a new document, we can create we can click the new or click Control N. And you know, uh, this might feel like a really simple step because yeah, what's so special about creating a new document? I would just select some size and that's all. But I think it's really remember to keep in mind what what are the needs of our audience because essentially we are what all what we are doing, you know, we have to keep them in our mind. So it would be nice to know if they will use a mobile device for e-learning course of e um, 
if we are creating a poster, then it's obviously we need to create a printable materials. But for this, uh, in this case, I would choose the size, which you can see in here. It's uh, HD. It's in the film and video tab. And when I hit create, I will get a new blank canvas for, you know, for our creativity to unfold. So we have a white space and let's start with the foundation of the Photoshop, which are the layers. On the right side, you can see the layers panel. And right now we have only one layer called background. You can see that it's locked. To unlock, you just need to click the padlock icon and now you can do whatever you want. Uh, I said that the layers are the truly foundation of the Photoshop because you know the layers are like a building blocks. It's like you know having the elements in the storyline or in to be honest any other software. Uh, in this space, you can of course add a new layer. You can group the layers. You can rearrange them. So I'm probably saying some basic stuff, but since it's a you know basic in a basic Photoshop session, I need to mention these things as well. Um, one more note on the layers. I think it's really good to have, you know, a lot, maybe not a lot of, but to keep the main uh, elements of the design on the separate layers because it makes it really easier to manipulate them, to arrange in a specific way, to apply different effects. But you can you will see, uh, you know, this rule in action a bit later. And the other tip that I can give you is maybe a bit boring and sometimes time consuming, but it's always good to rename your layers because, you know, uh, let me show you the example that I created without specific names. It might be quite messy and, you know, it's fine if you, you are the only one working with this, but I bet after some time you will forget which layer is which. So I strongly recommend adding a names to the layers. Okay, I will just see if I can see a chat, if there are any questions, but I I think there are none. And by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them as we go, so I can you know answer them directly during the, this session. Cool. So as I said, we have a blank space, a white canvas, so we can start designing but actually before that, I know I said it quite a lot of times right now that we'll start designing, but there are some steps worth considering before doing that. Um, one of the things that I really like in the Photoshop is that you can create your own layout with grids. You can see that now there are some guides on the screen because I used the predefined template for the video. Uh, if you are in the same situation and you would like to have a clean screen without any guides, you just need to go to view and then show. You can either hide the guides or if you would like to use them, let me just turn them on again. And then you can go to guides and clear the guides. If you want to use them in your project, you just need to simply click and drag the guides on the screen. You can you can do it from the left side or from the top and have as many as you want on the screen. To remove one specific guide, you can just click and take it away from the screen. But the fastest way to clean your workspace entirely, as was uh, what I said, go to the view and then the guides clear guides. Okay, so for this project, you can see that I have some margin, margins left. And to do so, I could, you know, I could try to pull these guides like this. And you can see, actually, while I'm dragging the guides, you can see that near the cursor, there is an amount of pixels, how far it is from the left side and from the top. But I think it's you know quite time consuming to set the perfect amount of the pixels. So instead of that, I will once again clear all the guides, go 
to the guides menu and you can see an option called new guide layout and this is a really nice place where you can create your own layout if you hit columns then you can select for example i want five columns with a specific width and the gutter which is a space between the columns you can combine columns with rows so for example this one might be quite handy when you are working on some poster or maybe infographic but in this case as i already mentioned i would like to have margins uh, from each side and i will keep the default value which is 20 pixels hit ok and we have guides already in place uh, another cool feature with the guides is that you can add only one guide if you click new guide you can see that by default uh, photoshop requires you to add a pixel value but if you change it to percent and hit enter then we'll have a guide perfectly in the middle and let's create one more one more guide this time horizontal one and have it also in the middle of the screen so in in this way we have a nicely divided screen in four quarters and i think it's especially helpful at the beginning of your journey with designing e-learning and to be honest with all kind of design activities to set up uh, some kind of layout and you know in this way you can have a really nice really nice design okay we have now for as i said for uh four quarters and layout in place there is also one more thing i can do with the guides i can uh, lock them so now it's not possible you know to drag them um there is one more tip i would like to share with the guides i know maybe it's not the most you know fun topic having lines arranged on the screen but uh, maybe it's a more general tip for the photoshop it's you know really nice to learn all the shortcuts because then it will you know streamline your design process very much and for the guides if you hit control and semicolon then you can hide and show the guides okay we have the guides in place and now let's think about our colors we'd like to use <coughs> i'm sorry on the right side i open the swatches panel and you can see there are some predefined color palettes in here that you can use but the cool thing is that for example if you are designing something for your company and you have strict brand booked with a specific colors that you need to use you can create your own color palette or your own swatches so you don't have to type the hex code or every time you want to you know change the color of the shape or the text to do so you can create this icon with a plus and name and you can you can add a simple swatch or one color but what i really like about about this place is that you can actually import some um <clears throat> color palettes that you can find online and let me show you quickly one page that i'm using very often when i'm designing i hope you can you can see uh, see this this website it's called colors and on this uh, on this page you can create your own palette explore the inspiration and do many many more things so maybe let's explore some trending palettes and see what we have here and maybe you have noticed but for the for the project i showed you at the beginning i used this palette let me just open it so you can see how it works in, in this website and what's uh, really cool is that you can explore uh, export this palette as the ase file and then you are able to import it to the Photoshop. If you want to import, you need to right click somewhere here on the swatches panel and then select option import swatches. 
and I will open my folder. You need to change the file type to SAE. And then you will see the color palette to import. You can already see that I have imported this one before this uh, session. So I have it doubled now called green one and green two. Cool. So we have the grids, we have the colors. So now we can start designing. If we look at this example, you can notice that it's basically three rectangles, one half and two quarters. So we can start with using the shapes in the Photoshop to create a you know, basic, basic structure. To add a shape, we need to go to the left side, to the toolbar, and select the, this shape icon and simply draw some shape on the screen. You can see that by default, this shape has an outline. But if we want to get rid of this outline, uh, we just need to go on this on the right side uh, on the properties panel. And you can see that there, there is a one pixel stroke. If you want to remove the stroke, click, click on, on the black color and then select this icon. So now we are free. There is no, there is no um, outline on this shape. Um, there is one more one important thing when working with layers and with shapes in the Photoshop. Now you can see that when I click on the item, it has automatically some handles to you know expand it, make, make it bigger. But sometimes uh, it might not be the case because when you see at the top, you can see the auto select option and show transfer controls. If these two are not ticked, then you are not able to select a, to select an object directly on the screen. And unfortunately, you would need to go and select layers in here, which is quite time consuming. So I highly recommend having these two options selected. And in this way, you can easily switch between different layers and you know, select them directly on your screen. Um, I know that I said word guides a lot of time today, but you'll see why they're really useful and why they are really practical when working on the project. We want to have this shape placed perfectly in, in this corner. You can see that it actually snaps to the guides. So it's really helpful to position specific object in the right place. So now we have it in this corner. We need to just make it a bit bigger. But now you can notice that when I'm, you know, resizing the, this shape, it, it, it is resizing proportionally. It keeps the proportions. And the reason why it's working like that uh, is because there is a small chain icon selected at the top. If we untick this one, then I can transform this shape freely. There is also another workaround. If you want to have, you want to change the size, not proportionally, you can hold your shift button and then you will be able to you know, expand this shape in all the directions. So let me create a half of our project. And so we have one, one side of the layout. And now we need to create two smaller ones, two quarters. Uh, I can click on the layer and duplicate this, create a new shape, or using again the shortcut on the keyboard, you can hold your Alt key and move the shape to the right or left to the any direction, and you'll have an instant copy. You can see the new layer pops in the layer panel. So now we have halves let's split this one or make it shorter so it's actually a quarter okay and create another one duplicate this layer uh, i will also change the colors so we can see the different uh, parts of our project and here uh, you can see why the swatches are really 
useful and handy to use in the project. You can, of course, you know, modify the color, clicking on this fill icon, and then select whichever color you want. But as I said, if you have some specific color palette or brand book you need to follow, you just need to click the swatch at the top, and you can change the color, the shape, the color of the shape instantly. Let me just have a look what I used in the original project. Okay, this was this was a bit dark. So we have a now we have a structure with three building blocks, and not to forget, I will change the names to fifty percent, twenty five percent top, and twenty five. And cool. So now I think it's time to add some pictures with uh, images. You can either click file and open and select the image that you'd like to use. Let me check what I have in here, for example, this one. And if you use this option, the new image should open in the new tab, but you can also drag the images directly from your folder and place them in your design. Like this. Uh, I, I think, you know, with, with the images, it depends what you prefer. I usually drag the images directly into the project because in this way, they are imported as the uh, in its part objects. You can see that this layer, which is an image, has a small icon. And as I said a second ago, it's called a smart object. And actually, it's smart for a reason. It's not just a name. It's you know another tip I can share with you. I will just replicate the images and show you what I'm talking about. So. You may think why it's, use, it's useful to have an intelligent, intelligent object or smart object, object in your project. The first reason why is it preserves the quality of the image. Since this is a simple image, it's not a vector file. You can't you know, make it bigger without losing some quality. But let's say I have this image and I want to make it slightly smaller like this have it somewhere here, and then I think, okay, I don't like it, I will make it bigger again. And when I'm resizing it again, you can see that the quality is really poor. To avoid that, uh, you can transform your layers into the smart objects. And now if I resize the image and make it bigger again, the quality is the same. So it's a really nice feature because, as I said, you can preserve the quality. The other nice thing about the uh, smart object is that you can use some filters, uh, but the filters will not modify the image itself. They will appear as an option below. So you are able to remove the filters or the different effects. You don't need to worry that, oh, I forgot you know, to change the image or I forgot I don't like this effect and I would like to undo what I did, uh, but I will show you this in a second, how it works with the effects. Yeah, you can see that this image has a, a different a different look because it's a, it's a duotone image. Um, I think it's really important to have this visual integrity when we work with different images, especially using a free resources then it's uh, you no know, it's quite hard to find the same to have the same look and feel with different images and a nice trick to have them more or less aligned is to use a duotone effect there are some websites that you can use online to generate uh, these images but it's also quite simple to do in the photoshop let me show you how to do it if we go uh, to the this top panel and select image, add adjustment and gradient map. You will see that the gradient that is here, it's applied onto the image as a duotone effect. If you double click on the layer, 
you can then change the colors. Again, you can use the swatches for, for the right colors for your project. You can also <clears throat> use some predefined um, gradients, but let's stick with this one. When I hit OK and again OK, you can see that this picture is not directly modified. You can see that there is a, this gradient map effect down below as a separate option. And what's really nice about the smart objects and this feature, if you double click on the gradient map, you are able to edit it again. So this is quite nice. You don't need to worry that your image is you know, permanently um, changed. And in this way, you can apply multiple filters. For example, if we go to the filter gallery and use some blur, you can see that every effect or every filter will uh, pop up on the list below the layer. For this, uh, for this project, I really don't want the blur, so I can deselect or hide the effect. I can also right click and delete smart filter. Cool. So now we have this picture edited. And now we need to put it inside this quarter. This is another feature that I love in the using in the Photoshop. Of course, you can crop the picture, make it you know slightly bigger, and then and then crop it so it fits in in this in this place. But instead of you know permanently cutting some elements of the image, you, we can just use something that is uh, that is called. Let me show you the clipping mask, and it works like a, I would say a container. You can put an image inside of the shape or another image. You can have multiple elements inside. And in this way, you can actually you know, manipulate the image, look for the best angle, make it a bit, let's make it a bit bigger again. So I think it's really cool because you don't need to, you know, crop your image and move it freely within this clipping mask. Okay, it's looking more or less the same. And I will show you once again how to create the clipping mask. If you select a layer that needs to be clipped or put inside another object and right click on the layer, you can see an option create clipping mask. And the mask is always uh, one layer below. You can also use a shortcut on your keyboard. If you hold Alt key and navigate your mouse between the two, two layers, you can see that the cursor has changed and there is a small rectangle or square with the arrow. If I now click, then I will release the clipping mask. And when I click again, you will see that the image is uh, inside. It's, it, the clipping mask has been created. So we are slowly progressing with our uh, layout for today. We have an image, we have a left half and the bottom quarter. And <clears throat> the next step would be to create these dots that uh, will work as the carousel in the software. When you click on specific dot, you will see another plant coming in. I will just change the name of this file. Oh, okay, it's fine. Plan zero one. Okay, to create the this uh, shapes patterns carousel, whatever you want to call it, we need to use shapes again. Uh, as you might remember, I use uh, squares, but now if you click on the left side on the rectangle tool and so and click in the corner you can see the list with different shapes for this one we need some circles holding my shift key i can create a perfect circle so let's say 26 pixels is enough and again you can see that this shape has some outline or stroke and we don't want this let me change the background color and then 
I need to duplicate this shape. Uh, I already told you that you can duplicate specific layer by clicking, right clicking on this layer and select duplicate layer. But it's really faster just to hold your Alt key and then drag, drag this shape to the right or left to any other direction. And in this way, you can even see that in the Photoshop, you can already you know, distribute the shapes perfectly with the same space in between. Let's have it one more time. So now we have a five uh, steps in our carousel. But let's say you have this, uh, you know, circles in all the different places. They are not aligned. If we want to align them, we need to select all the layers. And at the top, you can see different options for aligning the objects. In this case, we want to have them aligned to the bottom edge and distribute evenly uh, horizontally. So now we have a perfectly balanced uh, carousel with the dots. Again, following the rules, I will rename the layers and dot. At the beginning of the session, I told you that the layers are the foundation, the building blocks of the project. And sometimes when you have maybe not a lot of them, right, like right now, but few of them, it's nice to group them in the folders so you don't see a very long list. Uh, so I will group, I will select all the five dots and click this uh, folder icon. In this way, I will create a new group. I will call it navigation. So now I have all, all the shapes in, <clears throat> in one group. It would be nice to have them aligned in the middle with this, with this square or with this picture. And now if I try to you know, drag the shape, you, know, you, you can see what's happening. I can only select one shape. But to change this, if we go up again, to the auto select option you can see that there is a small list and if you unfold the list you can select if you want to if you want to you know select a layer or group in this case we want to select group so now it's a bit easier because you because you can actually move around the whole group so let's have it somewhere here and uh, let's use our helpful hand from the Photoshop. I will select this group and the top quarter, use align option to have it centered. And now it's perfectly in the middle. You can see that in the example, there was also one uh, step which was active to show that we are talking about, you know, the specific plant and of course, it's only a mock-up, so you don't need to spend a lot of time on, you know, making it super beautiful or designing all the all the steps. It's enough to have only one active because when developing, for example, an e-learning course, I would recommend to use the shapes from the storyline or any other authoring tool rather than exporting the images from the Photoshop. So uh, let me just quickly create an active state. To do so, I would just need to switch back to the auto select layer option. I will open the navigation group and let's say I am on the step number two. I will duplicate this layer, call it active. Now I can change the, the color of, of this shape and make it slightly smaller. Something like, oh, sorry, let's try again. Something like this. Now, actually it's it's good that I wasn't able to have it uh, you know, centered. So now I need to select the active dot and the non-active. And I can use these options to align them. So let's go back to the our finished template and let's see 
we have an image, we have a carousel with the active dot. I would say now it's the time for the for some text. To add a text, you can use a tool called text from the toolbar. If you click on, on the letter T, you will be able to draw a text box. It's automatically filled with Lauren Ipsum. So if you are just creating a mock-up, feel free to use, use this content instead of writing a specific copy. But in this case, I prepared some, sh some short text to put inside. Uh, so let me give me a second. I will just copy the title. Here it is our title. And uh, by the way, if you have a text layer and you have the auto select option, then it will be treated as a regular object. So if you click, you won't be able to edit. You can you know move it around. If you want to edit a text, you can double click in the layers section. Or again, using a shortcut, you can press a T letter and then click on the text directly. And then you can modify your text. Let's go back to the example. Okay, it, it was a text. Let me change the color. Let me change the, okay, I have a, a right font. I will make it slightly bigger. 42. And now you can see that the actual text box is way bigger than the title. So it's it would be quite hard to have it aligned in, in, in this area. To change this, you need to click on the text layer, right click on the text layer, and then there is an option convert to point text. If you hit this option, you can see that the the text box was actually adjusted to the length of the text. So now we have a text selected and the left half of the of our project. And now it's perfectly aligned. Uh, one more thing that is quite important when we work with the text, it's really useful and I would say important as well to check the contrast and you know the readability of the text. To do so, you can also use the colors page that I showed you before. There is a contrast checker tool. And all you need to do is just to type the hex code for the text and for your background, and you will see a rating. In this case, I think it's really nice. You can see it's very good. It's good for small text and for large text as well. If we change, for example, I would like to use a white text, you can see that, you know, maybe it looks quite nice, the white and the green, but the contrast rating is very poor. So I would recommend, again, using this tool, not only to enhance the readability, but also keep in mind that some people may have some visual impairments, so it's nice you know, to, to be inclusive in the design. Going back to our project, we have a title. Uh, you can see that we have the same or the similar title down below. So I will just duplicate this layer. I will use again the shortcut, which is the Alt key, and drag this text in this place in the bottom quarter. Um, I need to change the color to white. And I will make it slightly smaller. In the picture, you can see a Chinese money plant. I will copy the name of the plant as well and make it make the title aligned in this quarter. Perfect. So we have both titles. Now it would be good to add the short intro text. We can you know, duplicate the layer again and work and uh, work with the text inside. But we can also create a, another paragraph like this. And you can see that if you um, select specific font size, font color, and font type, 
at the beginning and when you are working on the project, then every new um, text box and text inside will have the same uh, features. I will just copy the text that I've used for the mockup. Hit the T on the keyboard, then I'm able to edit the, the text box of the text. I will change the font to robot or regular and make it slightly smaller as well. Let's say 20. Okay. And now you can see that we have all caps in the in this text, we can, uh, and the text that I copied was like a regular sentence text. If we want to change this, uh, we need to go to the properties. And when you have the text layer selected and scroll a bit down, you can see in the type options, there are different um, features of the text that you can select. For example, in this case, it was all caps when I, Deselect this option, you will have a regular text. Uh, we can have an underline or stroke. But for this uh, for this text, I would like to have it written as a regular sentence. Now, uh, for some time, we don't need you know the guides because they are quite annoying uh, because you can see that the text is behind the guide. So I will hide them to have a clear visibility of my project. So in this case, when we have an intro text, I wouldn't recommend changing it to the point text because, you know, I think it's uh, with the paragraph text, it's safer to have, you know, this area maybe a little bit more expanded. So it works like the actual paragraph. Okay, let's make it align to the text. Have a quick look at the example. Okay, so now I would like to have this text and the left half centered. Perfect. I will maybe bring it closer to the title like this. And let's say I want to, you know, group these two title and the intro text together and align them to the middle of this half. So let me just select two layers, which is the title and the intro text. Instead of clicking this icon, you can click Control and G and the group will be created. Let's go with the intro text. And now <clears throat> I have the group selected. So I need to select this shape again, use Align Options, and we have this text perfectly aligned. I'm missing the text for the plant. So in this case, since I have already a proper format of, of the intro text and I don't want to set all the sizes and fonts again, I can just duplicate the layer. I need to drag it outside the group and then I'm ready to have it in here. I will copy the short plan description. It is text. And I need to change the color. I will make this text box again slightly smaller. Move it a bit more down a nice space between the title and the intro text or the plant description. Let's create another group and call it plant2 since it's the second step. And now having this group selected, we need to select the bottom quarter and have them aligned like this. So we are almost ready. We have our images, buttons for the carousel, the text, and we are missing two things, which is the menu button and learn more button to you know go inside 
and learn more about the specific plant. For the menu, I download the SVG icon. And a nice thing about Photoshop is that you can work with the SVG, which are the vector files directly in Photoshop. You don't need to open them in the Illustrator and change, for example, a color. Uh, you can just drag and drop them in your project. And I will just resize it a bit so it's not that huge. Let's say something like this. And now I need to select this menu icon and the left half of the project, align to the left edge and to the top edge. And now it's perfectly in the corner. Uh, I would like to have it moved a bit from the corner to give it a bit more breathing space. And if you select the layer or select the object, holding your shift button, you are able to move a specific object a bit further than just one pixel. So in this case, let me just align it again. Holding a shift button, I will just click once to the right and once to the bottom. And now it's perfectly, you know, spaced out on from the top and from the left side. So the actual, the last step to create this layout is to add a button. And again, we need to add a shape. Unfolding the list, we will choose the rectangle. We'll start with changing the color and removing the stroke again. And when I have this shape selected, I will zoom in a bit. You can see that there are, besides the regular handles to change, to, to resize the shape, there are also some dots. And when you hover over this uh, icon or the dot, you can see a curved line appears. And this is the option to create a rounded edges. Right now, if you hold, if you, sorry, drag just one um, dot, you can see that all the corners will be rounded. It's also possible to modify, again, in the properties. You can see the, the corners in here. Because the chain icon is selected, I'm able to manipulate all of them at once. But for example, if you want to have only the bottom, oh, sorry, the top corners rounded, I can change this to zero and this to zero. And in this way, you have like a table. But in this case, I would like to have all the corners rounded in the same way. This. And we have a background for our button. Let's make it aligned with the quarter. And we are missing only the text to learn more. So you can see that the font used in the button is the same as the title. So I will just simply duplicate this uh, text layer, drag it to the top. So it's above the button. Um, I will change the size of the text to 16 and make it black for a better contrast. Also, I need to change it to learn more. And in this case, it's nice to have an option, not the paragraph text, but point text. So it's, you know, the text area or text box is exactly the same as the content inside. So now I'm able to have it perfectly al aligned within the button. And let's not forget to change the name, button background. I can group this and call it learn more button. Uh, it's also possible to have you know, two groups in the another one, but let me just uh, move the text a bit higher. This. So now when I select plant tool and learn more button, 
I can group them and have in one group one details. And now I can select this group together with the bottom quarter and have it perfectly aligned. Yeah, so let's <clears throat> let's compare what we designed today with what I have created before. Yeah, I think we can call it a success. It's more or less the same. Um, yeah, so actually that's all from my side. Um, I will stop sharing my screen. And I don't know if there are any questions or you are, you know, curious about something when it comes to Photoshop. Let me check the Q&A section, but I don't think we have any questions in here. Yeah. So in this case, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you want to have this working working files from the Photoshop. I'd be glad to share them. It would be the best to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, Joey, if you have anything more to add. Oh, I can see some some uh, comments. Thanks. Yeah, I will share the files, please. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I can share them uh, on the conference website. If not, please reach out to me on LinkedIn and I will be happy to share. Yeah, we can figure out like um, how we can share out links. So I'll I'll have Tom do that. Maybe it's one of those, like we'll put it on the web page yeah. <laughs> type of things. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, we'll give a couple minutes for any other questions or anything like that. Uh, if you have any way that you uh, want, you know, if people can reach out to you, of course, I know you're on LinkedIn, but any follow-ups like that as well. Um, hang out for a few. Maybe one, one, yeah, one more thing about the Photoshop in general. I know, you know, that it's quite it can be quite intimidating when you open a new software and you see all the options flying around your screen. But I will, you know, highly recommend just to have fun and click. And, you know, even if you mess up with the workspace, you can always make it back again. Yeah. Uh, you can also, you know, watch some tutorials on YouTube because now it's, you know, a lot of great short videos, bite-sized videos where you can use to design your things. And I just, you know, I would say just have fun and design. I can agree with that. <laughs> Most of the stuff I've designed are happy accidents. So yeah, usually, usually, usually with blending mode, <laughs> usually hitting yeah. a blending mode. <laughs> randomly. I'm like, ah, I like that. That's We're going to do that. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, doing the presentation. Everybody, thank you so much for, um, you know, being a part of this. Uh, I'm going to be hopping over to, I don't remember what the other one is, um, but in about uh, 15, 20 minutes, uh, storytelling and the art of engagements with uh, James Gilchrist. I hope I said that name right. Um, so that's what's going on uh, at 8.15 or, well, 8.15 my time, whatever 15 in the next hour is. Uh, also, it's a little <laughs> bit early. Couple minutes late in, but also on the main stage is uh, education data mining, uh, next big thing in corporate learning, which is one I'm excited to go back and check the recordings for. Uh, which, by the way, if you haven't, um, there are recordings for all of this, including this session. These will be uh, up on, I can only assume, IDTX. I kind of threw in this on a whim. So, um, but thank you guys so much. I will see hopefully some of you in probably about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and if not, have a great rest of IDTX 2023. Thanks for the session. All right. Cheers, everybody. Bye.